Welcome to part 21 of Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Correlated Subqueries. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. So let's say that you've reached this video out of order. Let's say that you need to start at the beginning. Just go ahead and check up here. And what you'll see in the card is a link to the first video in this series, the overview video. And that's where you can go ahead and get started. You might also notice there's another video or two in there as well, just in case you're interested in some of my other content. Okay, let's go ahead and get started working with correlated subqueries off to SSMS. Okay, here we are in SSMS and we've got a hypothetical scenario. And you'll probably remember this from the last video and it is the AdventureWorks sales manager would like to see the largest sale ever made by any of the AdventureWorks sales reps. Now, in this particular scenario, if you're familiar with the other videos in the series, you'll think to yourself, geez, Dave, I could totally use row number for that because row number is awesome, right? I just set the window up where the first row, you know, row number one is actually the largest sale that any particular sales rep made. And I just pick out the rows that are row number one and everything's awesome. Yes, you could totally do that. So... To make things more interesting, of course, I've got a contrived example for you. And by the way, the sequel in this particular video is totally contrived to illustrate a point. And the point will become clear soon. So to make it more interesting, what we're going to do is we're gonna say, look, not only does the sales manager want to know the largest sale of each rep, but also what percentage of that sale rel is relative to their total lifetime sales. So for example, let's say sales rep A, let's say we'll call him Bob. Bob has made a million dollars in sales in his lifetime working for AdventureWorks and his largest single sale is $100,000, which means that it's 10% of his total lifetime sales. So we wanna calculate essentially a virtual table where each row is a sales rep, biggest sale ever, percentage of total sales, and we'll just throw in total sales for Grinzies into the mix as well. So we can start with a query prototype, and this is what I definitely advise. As we've seen throughout the, this video series, if you break your queries up into logical chunks and then kind of stitch them together, it makes things a lot easier than trying to think, you know, what does this query look like all up from just the get-go? So here we go. We've got a little query prototype here, and if we run it, we can see here that, you know, we get back some data. And most importantly, what we see is that there are multiple sales reps because each sales rep makes multiple sales. Okay, no problem. So that means we have to do a group buy, we gotta do some aggregation, you know, do some sums and all that kind of cool stuff, right? All that jazz. So this is what this is telling us. So we say, okay, no problem. We got the skills for that. We've got the skills to do that. So we can say, okay, the easiest way to prototype this is just to try and get it to work for a single sales rep. And you can see here, that I've got my query right here. And if I just run this, my first query, it's the same query that we saw before, right? And then I just wrapped it into CTE because CTEs are quite lovely. In fact, you should use them all the time. So I'm just wrapping this up. And this says, look, I can grab all the individual sales rep data. Sweet, right? I join up the sales rep to the employee. I get their name. I get the sales order amount and all that kind of jazz. Cool. It gives me the raw data to start with. And I get that as a CTE. And then I can say, okay, cool. Just grab me all the records that happen to belong to Amy Alberts. I group by Amy, and then I can calculate all the things that I need just by using some handy dandy aggregate functions. Easy peasy, we've seen all this before. I just run it, show you that it works just fine. There's Amy, her largest sale ever was about 72 grand, and she's made about 732,000 in lifetime sales. So her single largest sale represents about 9.81% of her total sales. So that's a pretty big sale, right? One sale accounted for almost 10% of everything that she sold so far during her employment. Now, that's totally cool. It works. And what we could do is we could just say, look, you know what? We can just add in some extra sales reps. We could just, I mean, it's tedious, but we could do it. This would totally work. It would totally you know, this not, SQL Server is going to be totally cool. If that's what you want to do, Dave, it's awesome. Go ahead. It's fine. And you can see here I get the three different um, results come back for each sales rep. But that's, you know, that's a little efficient, inefficient. Let's say we only had five sales reps. Maybe this is a viable strategy. But what if we had 100 or 1,000 
Or let's say we have a lot of turnover, so people come and go quite a bit. It's kind of a pain in the butt to keep updating this query based on who's who in the zoo, right? Which sales reps are still working for the for AdventureWorks and which ones are not. So we can do better than this. We can do better. So what we can do is we can take my CTE that I started with here, right? This is my CTE. And then we can add a new CTE. And this new CTE just says, hey, <clears throat> excuse me, just get me the distinct sales reps from here. Right? This gives me all of the individual sales reps, right? So if I just run this once again, you can see here, gives me the individual sales reps along with their, um, excuse me, along with their sales, all their individual sales. But I can also say, look, you know what? Just give me the distinct sales rep, right? Because when we're here, we said, hey, we're gonna combine the last name and the first name and call that sales rep. And what this is saying is, look, just give me the distinct names. Just give me the unique names. And if I wanted to test this out real quick, I could just like, you know, boop, 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 just like this. And I could just run this right here real quick and I get the individual names back. Okay, cool. So I've got one CT that returns each individual sales order for each individual sales rep, right? So there's multiple rows because each individual sales rep hopefully is making multiple sales. And then I've got a second CT that says, look, out of that virtual table that the first CT creates, just get me the unique or the distinct names. Okay, cool. That works great. And then of course, if I wanted to just like run the whole thing, I can just run this whole query and I get back the same thing, just the distinct names. Okay, cool. So not only getting back all the sales history for all the sales reps, but I'm also getting back the individual names. Now what I can do is use what is known as a correlated subquery. And what a correlated subquery does is it allows you to define an inner query that takes a dependency on an outer query. And we're gonna see this in code, but conceptually I just wanna tell you what it does. So the inner query takes a dependency on the outer query. And basically what happens is that for every individual row that is produced by the outer query, so let's say the outer query makes 10 rows, the inner query will be executed 10 times once for every row in the outer query, which is pretty cool because this is exactly what we want to do here, right? We like say, look, we've got distinct sales rep names. And what we'd like to do is make that the outer query, right? So we only have rows for each individual distinct name of a sales rep. And then what we want to do is for each one of those, go run the inner query and calculate the goodness for us. So let's see how that looks like. And let's see what that looks like in SQL code here, T SQL. Okay. So we got my first CTE and it's awesome. And then I got my distinct name CTE and that's great. So ignore this for a second. And just take a look at what we're doing here. The outer query is select sales reps from distinct sales reps. Okay, 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 okay. That makes sense, right? We've already done that before. This is the data we got back last time we did that, right? We got back 17 rows. 17 rows of data, 17 rows, one for each of the distinct names. So this is gonna be the outer query, right? Because we're ignoring this thing in blue. So the outer query says, just give me the distinct sales rep names, please. Sweet. That's our outer query. And we know it's going to have 17 rows. So then we go into the select list and we create ourselves an inner query. And we say, oh, go ahead and from the sales rep data, which is this CTE right here, right? The first CT that we built. Pull all the rows from there, please. And where they're only equal to DSR sales rep, right? This is the correlation. This is how you make a correlated subquery. Notice that the inner query here, which is working on the alias SRD, is saying, look, only match up on rows that come from DSR. DSR is the outer query. Okay, okay. Are you following me? Are you, are, you, are you picking up what I'm laying down here? So once again, 
if I'm actually, look, you know what? I'm just going to even just go ahead and get really crazy. I'm just going to control C, get rid of that. Oh, so this is the outer query, right? DSR is the outer query. And then we say, cool, I'm going to get back 17 rows of data. Those are the individual names for each of the sales reps. And I can go ahead and throw in an inner query, which I'm calling SRD. That's the alias here. And I'm saying, look, only match up data from the sales rep data CTE, which I'm aliasing SRD, where it matches up on DSR, which is the outer query. Now, as I said earlier, this is a contrived example to be sure. There are many ways to do this, but I wanted to show you what a correlated subquery is because there are certain instances where they are useful. As we'll see in a bit, those scenarios are limited. They're very limited, and I'll show you why. Okay, so cool. That means that this query here is only going to be executed vis-a-vis -vis the 17 rows that come out of the DSR, which essentially says, look, go find the max sales rep. Excuse me. <laughs> go find the max sales amount for each one of the unique sales reps. That's basically what this is saying. Okay, cool. Let's just go ahead and run that. And you can see here, cool. The Once again, Al, Amy Alberts, we see the, the about $72,000 sale. Cool. Sweet. And then we say, oh, great. We got correlated subqueries. Now we can solve the managers, the sales managers reporting problem. All we do is just add more correlated subqueries. And here we go. Now, once again, this suits my nefarious purpose, as you probably expected, because this query is going to get ugly, because it even says, hey, man, this query is ugly. So this is the CTE. We don't really care about that too much. We've seen it before a couple times. We've got this CTE. We don't care too much about that. We've seen it a couple times before. What we care about is this ugliness down here. Notice that I've added a correlated subquery for the largest sales amount. I've added a correlated subquery for the total lifetime sales. And then I've added a correlated subquery for the largest percentage, the percentage of the total sales that the largest sale represents. And if I run this query, I will get back all of the data that I would expect, all the awesomeness that I would expect. We can make that sales manager happy. And that'll take a second here because correlated subqueries are like kind of wacky in terms of your performance. And there you go, right? I get back 17 rows, one for each individual sales rep, largest sales amount, total lifetime sales, and then the percentage of their lifetime sales that the single largest sale represents. Okay, correlated subqueries, right? It's really a very co cool concept, which essentially says I have an outer query <clears throat> and it has X number of rows. And then for each of those X rows, I can go fire off an inner query. One, two, three, four, but how many ever I have. In this case, I have 17. One, two, three, four, blah, 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 oh, wait, I'm 17. So that's pretty cool, right? Essentially, it's like, hey, I've got a list of things from the outer query. Go fire off the subquery for each one of the members of that outer query's list or result set or virtual table. And I can do that like multiple times because you can see here, I got like three separate correlated subqueries. I can totally do it. It's not advisable. As we'll see in a second, there's a much better way to do it, but you could do it that way. So correlated subqueries can be interesting, but generally speaking, they produce ugly, complicated code that you definitely don't want to maintain over the long haul. So not surprisingly, it is part of a recurring theme of this series, common table expressions to the rescue, CTEs to the rescue. So here's our first CTE that we saw before. And then here's what we've done. We've just added a CTE that just pulls data from the first CTE. See that? from sales rep data, which is this for first CT here, which just gets you every single sales order by sales rep. And then we just group by the sales reps, which are the individual names, right? Last name, comma, first name. And then we just use our aggregate functions like you would expect. And then boom, easy peasy. This is a much better way to accomplish the same thing. However, you will see Legacy code. If you're writing your own code from scratch all the time, 
no problem, right? You don't have to worry about correlated subqueries or subqueries or any of that kind of jazz that we've talked about that you can do, but you probably shouldn't. You'll just write your code with CTEs, right? Right, because you know CTEs are awesome. You'll just use those. But if you're ever in a position where you have to work with other people's SQL code, you might see them do things that you would think, why aren't they using CTEs? Well, the question might have, the, the answer might have been, maybe they just didn't know about CTEs, or maybe the SQL is so old, maybe they didn't have CTE support when the code was written. Not likely, but that is, that is possible, depending on what you're working on, to be absolutely honest with you. So there are many reasons why that you should at least be aware that subqueries and correlated subqueries exist, even if I'm telling you don't use them unless you absolutely have to. Just use a CT instead, just so you know that they out, they're out there and they exist. All right, that's it for this video today. Um, I'm back. It's been a while. It's been a hiatus since the last SQL video. I'm going to start doing some regularly now. Next, next video is going to be on embedding SQL into an Excel workbook. And just for grinsies, what we're going to embed into an Excel workbook is SQL code to create a mighty process behavior chart. So when that video is out, I will add it either here or here to the end of this video so people can just click on it and see it. Otherwise, if you are interested in some of my other content, just go ahead and click up here, or you can also check the video description. And by the way, if you like what you see, Please, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, smash that thumbs up, that like button, so that the YouTube algorithm says, look, Dave's SQL stuff is good. Let's go ahead and spread it around YouTube. All right, that's it for part 21. Stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.